Uh, today in the in, uh, internet era, era of social media, uh, it's easier to build a music career independent without a major label. Uh, you even said that you became a millionaire at 27 or 28 uh, years. Yeah. Uh, and what do you think was the best uh, aspect of being the musician today? Well, it's, um, it's very great being an independent artist. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's, you know, um, it's, uh, it feels very satisfying you know, to accomplish these goals, you know, just with a small little team out of my house. And, you know, we, we are not, we're not, we don't have any major label ties. We're just on the internet promoting everything. So, you know, I recommend every artist to go out and, I mean, if you can get the major deal, get the major deal, but make sure, you know, the contract, the paperwork is right. But, you know, so a lot of times my situation is better than some people's major deal because they may be signed and, they may be next to these big names, but no moves are being made, you know? So in the long run, it's, about, it's all about the moves and the money that's coming in. So um, <coughs> what was the other question that you asked? I, you, asked you asked like yeah, a, 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 a... About the best uh, aspect of being a musician in the internet era. Oh, well, the best thing is, I mean, you can just put things out whenever you want to, and you don't have to report to anybody but yourself. Um, and you have a direct connection with the fans, you know, you don't have to go through some third party who got you famous or, you know, who built, you, built a buzz for you. So, um, and, and you make, you know, you're getting the majority of the money. Yeah, it's just, it's just very rewarding in so many ways. But like I said, there's, there's good major deals out there too. So I don't, rec I mean, if they can get the major deal that's legit, get that, you know. Yeah, okay. And earlier this year you released a very uh, personal dark song, Die This Way, uh, where you intricately rap about loneliness, unhappiness. Um, and how are you feeling right now at this point in your life? And how important is it to have songs like this uh, where you can vent from time to time? Um, well, right now, I mean, I'm cool. Everything's fine. In the time of me making that song, that was how I felt. And, you know, I, I just have to get my feelings out whenever I feel them so I always just hit the studio and write whatever I'm feeling so I just had to get the, that emotion those emotions out of me through that song die this way and it's pretty much just saying like what whatever people think of me whether I'm hard-headed obnoxious I'm weird or whatever it's just I'm gonna die this way and I'm I'm not gonna change you mm -hmm. know I'm, this is just the way I am and this is who I choose to be and I'm gonna die like this um, what else did you ask? Uh, how important is it to have songs like this from oh. time to time? Oh, um, I, I, think it's, I think it's really important to have songs like this because th those are the type of songs that I feel people are waiting for who are going through hard times in their life or mm -hmm. they feel like no one is going through what they're going through. So when they hear a song like that, they're like, oh, shit, he said exactly what I'm yeah. feeling right now. So I think they're very important. I, I think they it builds more fans than, <coughs> like, and it, it builds more long term fans than the fast little fun party songs mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah and at the same time you're, you're famous for being a really cool guy and uh, always being willing to to meet with fans like going skateboarding before shows uh, yeah and uh, lately you took uh, fans kayaking in yeah. sydney uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, which of those meetings was like the most uh, memorable to you which stuck in your head for some reason kayaking is kayaking with the fans is definitely memorable um, Stuff, yeah. that that's probably the the coolest thing I've done with fans and you know I want to do more stuff like that random spontaneous trips um, it's just yeah it's very satisfying you know they get to be happy I get to be happy we're all doing something cool and when I when I hang out with them I, like when I went kayaking I told them like hey I know how you guys are looking at me right now just stop it we're gonna go kayaking <laughs> You're talking to Marcus right now, and I don't really want to talk about the music. Let's just talk about kayaking, and let's talk about whatever, anything mm -hmm. else. But yeah, and then they're all cool. So it was, it was fun. You know, took pictures with them afterwards, and then yeah. yeah. Me now, uh, and uh, did you always have so, such great relations with fans, or did it come with time, with with expanding your career? I've always had the connection with the fans like that. It's, it's just the type of person that I naturally am. <coughs> um, I mean, it kind of comes from me. Like, I, I've always, um, 
like in, in high school, I was always a class clown, so I always like to be out there and capturing people's attention and all that. And I, I don't see it as a problem. I mean, it, it can be a problem at times with fans, you know, crowding around me depending on what I'm doing or where I'm trying to go. But, yeah, a lot of times, though, it's just, it's, it's just cool, you know, as long as they're not doing anything crazy. Um, it's fun. It's cool to just know that I can do something so simple just to make their whole week or year, whatever it is, and you know. So I, I don't, I don't look at it as an issue. Um, yeah, and I, I just like to be that, that guy. Just I, I naturally am that guy, but it's just cool to, yeah. I, I would love to see more rappers be this way, where they're just out there like, oh shit, you're out here with everybody. Like, what are you doing here? So yeah. Uh, and a year ago you did a song, No Words, and now the biggest hit in the US sounds like I got brothers in Atlanta, da 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 And yeah. what do you think about it? Um, I, I like the beat. The beat is tight. Um, I think and that's, it's, are you talking about what I think about my song or the Panda song? Uh, the Panda song. Oh, the Panda song, I mean, I don't... I think that song that... I think about five percent of people understand the lyrics. Goes goes number one. Yeah, I mean, I know I already know nobody. Really. Um, I got bras in Atlanta. Panda, fan, panda. Fanta, panda. Yeah, I think I know about four or five words in the song. But I mean, it's a, it's a, it has a cool bounce to it. But I have no idea what he's saying. Um, the, the zone is there though. But I, but I, I know he knows. Nobody knows what he's saying either. He just that that's his style, I guess. Is. To be honest, though, he's, he's, he, got, he has a cool little style. Did you see his double XL freestyle thing? It was, yeah. it was pretty, it was, it was unique. I have to say, I, I <laughs> strangely enjoyed it. it was, I, I, en I enjoyed watching his little melody he was doing. and Something new. Yeah, I think he was looping like four verses, <laughs> four, four lines. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a character. But I, but I like the character of, of designer, though. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very interesting character. And, you know, I, I, I'm curious to see what he does. Um, But yeah, I definitely don't know what he's saying with his music. <laughs> okay, no. mm -hmm. and last month I was watching an interview with Dizzy Wright, uh -huh. and I found an interesting quote because he said something like, uh, I feel like Hobson is the type of person he didn't want to work with nobody, he wanted to do everything by himself, and I think that drained him. Uh, so what would be your response to that? Because uh, if we look at the <coughs> album credits, mm -hmm. Uh, it's really like you did almost everything on your album, from writing to rapping to producing. So yeah. did it take its toll on you as an artist and as a person? Um, it it definitely it's definitely draining, you know. I mean, but that's what makes me me. Um, that's why, you know, I got the fans I do. I put a lot of work into the music. I put a lot of work into my videos, and I'm there for every step of it. And I'm creating pretty much everything, you know. I, um, so <clears throat> it's yeah, it's very draining. You know, after after you do after I spend a few months working on an album, I'm. I'm drained. Yeah, because you're pretty much like a one-man band, right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, it pays off. I'm, I'm in, I'm in Europe right now. You know, mm -hmm. I'm doing my solo tour out here. <coughs> so, yeah, it, it, it pays off. Um, mm -hmm. It does take a toll, you know. When I'm at home, I just like to kind of stay in my own little zone, and not be bothered afterwards. I just want to sit and watch TV and, and eat true. cereal all day. But yeah. Okay, and uh, when did you start making beats and uh, what helped you develop your style like that? Uh, who was an influence uh, and uh, what created the sound that we hear from you musically as a producer? Well, it's mainly influenced by like the whole Dr. Dre aftermath camp. That, that's what I grew up listening to. Those are the type of beats that I was aiming to make. 50 Cent, Eminem, Dr. Dre. Um, the, so... But I, I've been playing the, the keyboard since I was three years old, so I know how to create melodies and all mm -hmm. that. So w once I was like, I don't know, 14, 15, or 16, I started um, making beats and <coughs> just working on it. Just working on it and kept practicing. And, you know, the ins inspirations were Dr. Dre, um, Neptune's Timberland. They were all dope producers that I tried to, you know, um, make beats like mm -hmm. when I first started getting into music. Um, you know, I kind of developed my own little style over the years of creating my my sound. And, you know, my sound is still developing. But, yeah, that's just, I, guess, I hope that answers some of your questions. Hey, man, I feel worthless. Please don't think I'm doing this on purpose. I just can't, I can tell my urge and urge it. Oh, my God, you're so perfect. Man, if you fuck with this bitch, then you're too. You follow me in my door, cool to my hotel. I'm like, who are you? Where you going? She said, I'm like, 
like, wow, that's where you gotta go. Just because I lift the mic, don't make me get the right to follow me back. My hotel won't be late by the spin the night. I she said and uh, not long ago you set up your uh, label Undercover Prodigy mm -hmm. and what are the, fur the further plans? Uh, do you want to uh, to focus on your own career now or maybe uh, sign some other MCs and build their career from your perspective? Yeah, I want to sign out the artist in the future. I want to put out an album first, build up the label, build up you know the buzz for it, let everybody know it's real, really real and then um, yeah, sign up, sign other acts. I don't know who yet. I'm open to, you know, having new artists on. I definitely want to do something different. I don't want to do the same typical hip hop stuff. I want something that's just refreshing. I don't know what that is. I don't know, but yeah, there will be other artists in the future. And uh, <coughs> getting back to your Ruthless days, mm -hmm. you said in one interview uh, about uh, Tomika and Ruthless, uh, she tried to change my image a few times, it was a horrible label, it was probably the worst label ever. And uh, how did she try to change her image? What were her advices? Um, there was just wardrobe things that were going on back then that weren't necessarily my style. Um, and I didn't know, yeah, just didn't fit with what, where I was going and what I was doing, stuff like that. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of labels will try to do that to an artist. I, 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 I'm a weird guy. I've, I've been weird. I gotta be represented in a weird way. <laughs> so my music is weird, so when I step outside and you see me, these people gotta instantly see weird. So they can be like, okay, weird music, weird guy, makes sense. They didn't want me to be as weird as I was. They, they liked it in a way, but they were, yeah, but they, so some of the photo shoots were just, the, the outfits were kind of ridiculous. Yeah. No way, Jerry Heller, a scary fella. I hate to fucking name every letter. I'm very fed up. You acting like an ordinary heifer. I'm a Texas to the bunch of every dresser. We gave you our crust, and you had us corner. You got a city label deal with water. And if I confront you about it, you'll tell me I need counseling, and I got it in short. You send me on tour and destroy it. Shitty hotels, no sleep, with no food to order. Me and Greece every single day is torture. How you expecting the A1 performer? Every time something's wrong, it's the same thing. Blah, 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 you just blame me. Then you tell Brooklyn and Jamie. Now they both thinking I'm crazy. I deal with this on the day. My career initially raised me. I won't let this nigga break me. He playing dizzy right as go replace me. Shame. And uh, last year you had the chance to play uh, Ferry B and the TV show Murder in the First. Yeah, yeah. And in 2009 you played in the movie uh, Fame. Uh -huh. So how would you compare those two experiences and is acting something that you would like to pursue further? Yeah, acting is definitely something I would like to pursue further. Um, the Fame role was kind of cool. The Murder in the First role, I mean, it, it was fun, it was a cool experience. But if I, if I do any more roles, I don't want to play no typical black street guy, gangster mm -hmm. dude. That shit is not... It's, I mean, it, it's... It, it can be cool at times, but it's not really like, mm -hmm. that's not all I am. That's not all we can be. So I don't want to be just playing gangster roles and all that. I want to do something different. Um, but yeah, I do want to act in the future. I want to mm -hmm. do more acting um, and get into it. I want to have a movie one day. I want to, yeah, I want to be heavily into it. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's fun. And you are acting also in some of your videos, like there are real acting scenes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, which one of your videos like uh, is like your favorite? Well, uh, my my new video, video it, my new music video um, that's coming out called For, for Die This Way. Mm -hmm. um, it actually just got complete completed today. I don't know what, when it's going to be released. Maybe in a few days. But this is the best acting I've ever done in any th mm. anything in general. This acting is, I mean, like I'm still improving, you know. But this is definitely. Mm -hmm. So far, the best acting that I've done. Um, I, I'm, I impressed myself with what I was able to do in this video. So, um, yeah, that's probably my favorite, mm -hmm. favorite acting type thing that I've done. And do you find acting uh, coming naturally to you, or, or is it that challenge? Like, what are the hardest mm -hmm. things? Yeah, well, th it's just um, the, uh, acting has there's different obstacles in it and I'm not a master of all the obstacles but I do know one of the biggest things in acting is just being comfortable in your own skin and not giving a fuck about what anybody else thinks mm -hmm. and being, being able to be on a set and just let go even though a lot of people are, are watching you know and I'm able to do that on stage you know on stage I can just let go and be myself but um you know there, but there's levels to acting you know so there's yeah. people who can 
turn on switches of them t morphing into characters and they can do it in front of people and mm -hmm. And I'm not to that level. I can do it in front of people, but you know, the more people that start coming around, the more you know, I, I'm in my head mm -hmm. thinking about how they're taking me, and I need to learn to let go of that. And that's something that the great actors are able mm -hmm. to do. That you know, one day I hope to be there. But I, you know, there, there are things that I can do very well, though. You know, there are certain things. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm com very comfortable in my skin to a certain extent when it comes to being on camera. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I can let go, but there's different levels of letting go. So yeah. I just want to learn how to let all the way go where you, whatever character, I just fully hop into it and embrace it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll learn it one day eventually. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said, uh, I'm the only rapper who had the balls to publicly question God and religion without being afraid of what it would uh, make me look like. And did you ever, uh, ever have any topic that you were hesitant about and had doubts about uh, writing? <coughs> that I was hesitant about on other topics. Um, I mean, the God topic was pretty pretty serious. Um, there's, there's not really, there's not too many public topics that are that touchy. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think Ilmine 7, when I talked about God, that was kind of one of the ones where, you know, everybody has an opinion on God in some way, so I think that was the touchiest one. And yeah, people don't, don't do it too often, so I, I just wanted to do some, just say, say fuck it. And I, don't, I, don't, I wanna keep doing that as an artist. I wanna keep on, you know, um, taking it to the next level, talking about things that people didn't think to talk about, and, you know, and open people's minds up and show them new perspectives. And when the song can, can became uh, an impulse for a discussion like uh, White Privilege from Macklemore, for example, uh -huh. Uh, a lot of publicists and people talked about the song for, for a few weeks. <coughs> what, you say what, uh, the, the White Privilege song by Macklemore? You uh, said people talked yeah, about it? Yeah, like uh, the White Privilege too. From oh yeah. Right. So a lot of discussion. And a lot yeah, of that, that's, a, that's, yeah that, that's a topic as well. That's a, that, and see, I think it's the, the topic is more powerful. Because like, you can make the, so let's just say, um, yeah, I, th I think him doing it from the white, White people's perspective is, is, is very powerful because he's a white guy and white people didn't expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. Don't expect that to happen. You expect a black guy to talk about, yeah. you know, the, uh, that situation where you don't expect a white guy. So it's like the white guy helping the black people out and it, it, it's, it's shocking in so many ways. So that, that's dope that he did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say was the most important thing and uh, the most important song, uh, song that you've written so far? Most important song like, that I've uh, written, I, I, I say, if, people if come it up to was, you and say, um, uh, the song saved my life. Like. Mm. Fly, Ilmine 5, and Ilmine 7. Those are probably my, mm -hmm. the, um, yeah, <coughs> the, the most, I, I, guess, I guess, most impactful mm -hmm. song that I personally think I've written. You're part of probably the best uh, freshman class ever because nearly everyone uh, from, from the double XL freshman class with you blew up really big like Macklemore, MGK, Future, Italia, <coughs> Kidding, French Montana, like ten, ten, 10 of 10. Um, something like this, and how do you look back on, on being in, in, in this group, in this squad? Um, it was, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's cool. They, I mean, they, I'm glad, you know, a lot of people were successful from it. Um, yeah, I, I noticed a lot of people blew up. Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. They, they did what they did, you know. I've I just always been kind of focused on what I've been doing, so uh, congratulations to all of them, you know. I'm, I'm glad I was a part of it part of it, you know, but there's more stuff to come. So it was cool, it was fun. Come on, one more time, give me that crown, one, six. Give me that crown, Come on, give me that crown, one, six. Give me that crown, one, Give me Give me that crown, one, Come on, give me that shit. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay, so do you have some last words for the fans in Poland? Um, Poland. Is, is the word kurva, is that the custom yeah. out here? <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you guys more. speak the same language as they do in Czech Republic? Um, it's a different one, but uh, oh, that's like the, this word is Polish. Do you actually. guys say Tavola? Is that a cuss word? No, that's no, not. no. Okay, that's Czech, what that, that's Czech. Okay, sorry. I know because I have a Czech friend and she tells me all the cuss words. <laughs> that's like a, at hip hop camp, about 70 80 percent of people are from Poland. So oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, well, cool. That's, the, that's, reason that's, that's the reason why Kurva blew up. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I appreciate the support, guys. Thank you. It's dope. Um, I hope the fan base continues to grow out here. I'm going to keep putting out dope shit, and I'm going to keep coming back here. I like it out here. Okay, so thank you very much for the interview. No problem. Thank you.